Good afternoon. Welcome again to Camp on Rap. Nice to see you again, Andy and Tom. Hello. Hey. And welcome to our two special guests, new to our XUK family, Rose. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Good, you're okay in lockdown? Yeah, we're all good. All you're good all enough. good. Who, 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 who are you staying with at the moment? Uh, my mum, my dad and my brother have come back from uni. Oh, okay, so all four of you. And what percentage of the cooking are you doing? I made spaghetti bolognese last night, actually, for everybody. So oh. I'm doing good. <laughs> oh, very good. And also welcome to Emily. Good to see you. Hi. Hi, how are you doing in lockdown? Are you surviving? Doing good, yeah. I've got some exams coming up, so that'll keep me busy. <laughs> oh, when, when are they? A few weeks' time. So we've got a little bit to go yet. Okay, yeah, well, good, good luck with them. Today we're going to be looking at the interview and how we all got our jobs at FCK. So I thought we'd start off at thinking, why did we apply for this job? So Andy, back in the summer of 2017, what made you join FCK? Well, initially I applied just for a lifeguard role. Um, and I didn't know too much about XUK um, before I applied. But when I arrived at the interview, um, I fell in love with everyone. And I really, really fell in love with the community atmosphere at the interview, um, which made me want to apply for the residential role. Um, so really, it stemmed from just from going and meeting everyone um, and just getting an idea of what camp would be like. And that's what really, really grasped me about the job. Yeah, it was, it was an interesting interview. I feel like you get to know people really well, even though you only meet them for a day and things. Yeah. But yeah, Emily, what was, what was your thought process behind it? I'd, um, I've done a few camps before. I've taken my brownies on camps and I've done like an international kind of summer camp, um, which is more teaching based. So I wanted to do another camp kind of this summer, but I wanted to do something a bit more activity based. And I liked the fact that it was run by a family and it seemed to have a really good community atmosphere, like what Andy said. So that's what kind of drew me to XUK. Yeah, decent. Yeah. What about you, Rose? What was your thinking? Yeah, one of my um, friends worked at camp last summer when she got back from travelling. And um, she was just telling me about it. And I thought, like, I've done past like brownie camps and guide camps and things. and volunteering stuff so I thought that I'd be quite good for it and that I'd enjoy it as well. So what was your thinking? You've sent off your application and you've been asked for an interview and you've got to go down to London. Emily what were you thinking on the day of the interview? I think it's going to be a big old journey to get from Exeter to London. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I did it in two so I went home in between so I, I got the train from Exeter up into the um, rugby in the Midlands, stayed the night here and then went to London very early the next day. Um, but the night before, I, um, I remember making my activity and I made one of my home friends come over and we were cutting out all these noughts and crosses to do um, my activity for the interview. And I was just talking over questions with her. But I remember getting quite nervous the night before. Rose, really, what, what did you have to really do to like, prepare for your interview? I wanted to go down like a, a arts or crafts kind of route so I made I came up with the idea of doing like origami but because we had a timed um, activity I was trying to um, time myself to make the origami and I couldn't like make it in time as well as probably teaching it in time so um, I, I landed on doing jumping frogs and we did a jumping frog race instead with the, uh, with the origami for the interview. Quick thinking. I remember I was in a restaurant in Budapest on the Tuesday and I got an email telling me I had an interview on the Saturday. So I had to fly home and then get a train from where I live, where there's like one train every two hours and get to London. So it was pretty hectic, but yeah, it paid off in the end. So Andy, can you remember your actual interview day and what you had to do on it? We had to create a, like, act out our lives with three other people. So we had to take it in turns acting out who we were without saying anything. Um, I think it was like our experiences or what we'd done. And I just remember being awful at it. Like that's, that's not what I'm good at. I'm, I like sports and I, I, I love to get myself involved like that, but being that theatrical, that wasn't me. So I found that really difficult, really challenging. But then I also remember we had to put together a wide game with these with this team that we've been put in 
um, which which I loved, and I think we did more or less a, a bulldog type of game. Um, we adapted it slightly, and I also distinctly remember there were different stations around the room in the interview process, and we had to complete different tasks working in small teams. So the the main thing I took away was just how uh, how appreciative and inviting everyone was to me being an interviewee. Rich, on an interview day when people are going around these different stations and they're acting out their life or putting a game together, is there anything that you and the other staff team are particularly looking for? Well, yeah, we discuss this in huge detail, as you can imagine, both at the beginning of each year and pre each interview, um, because we have certain ticks and crosses we're trying to give everybody for what they are good and not so good at. But sometimes we think, is this bit, is this as good as that? Is, should we be looking at um, whether somebody is, is energetic or enthusiastic or are those two things the same thing? So we only need one of them. And then you can find that you've given somebody five ticks in their five tick boxes and think, well, I'm giving them five ticks, but I don't want them to work for us. So it's quite a difficult thing to actually decide exactly how with a panel of, say, 10 people to whether we're going to give somebody a job or not. Um, but ultimately, it comes down to personality. And I think that's the same in most jobs. If you've got the personality to want to succeed, you're genuinely there for the right reasons, then that is more than likely that that will come through to us and, and you're much better, much more likely to get a job. Has there been a case, Rich, where you've spotted someone who has ticked all the boxes, like you've said, but you, ha you haven't hired them, instead you've hired someone that their personality just shone. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes, especially when you're working in a team that's so close knit, you, you are relying on people all the time. You need to know that everybody is there for each other and they're there, like I said before, for the right reasons. You, there are some incredibly talented people that just wouldn't necessarily work well at, at, at XUK or a camp because they're better at working by themselves, for themselves, and not necessarily in a team where you're re reliant all the time on each other. So having heard from like what Rich is looking for, Rose, would you say there's a point of your interview that stood out to you as you think, yeah, that's where I got the job? I just had the same approach to each activity piece with our group. That's probably where I felt most uncomfortable because they're like new people and you're sharing ideas and you want to make sure that everyone, their points being like included and stuff. Um, and I'm not very um, theatrical, so that was probably where I felt most uncomfortable, but I just wanted to make sure that I tried in all of them and applied the same mindset and things like that. So I don't think one particular thing stuck out as like, I think I did the best or tried the hardest in each. Uh, and so Emily, when you came out of the interview, were you thinking, yeah, I've absolutely nailed that and got the job, or was it a surprise when you got the email? It was, a bit, it was funny because, um, I made quite a good friend at the interview. We kind of swapped social media and we were chatting after the interview and we were both like, oh, we've got absolutely no idea how it went. We really enjoyed our day. Um, and I remember us both getting our emails and she got hers a few hours before and I didn't hear anything. And I was like, oh, maybe I haven't got it. And then I got really excited and getting the email. And what about you, Andy? Did you expect to get the job after your interview? Oh, it was in the bag. It was in the bag. <laughs> From the moment I stepped in, it was in the bag. <laughs> I'm sure it was a mistake. I said, I said in the email. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past you, Rich. Um, <laughs> I, de I definitely wasn't certain that I got the job. I think it was Rose that said, you just try the best that you can. Just apply yourself in every different situation. And I think when you do that, your mind's on so many different things that you don't really come out of it thinking, bam, I smashed that. You just sort of, you, you get through it and, and do the best you can. So you, I don't know if you can come out of it thinking, yeah, I've done really well there. Yeah, I remember after mine, I didn't think I got it purely on the fact that I was still in school. I hadn't done my A-levels and everyone else there had like graduated uni or they were a primary school teacher or a qualified coach. And I just thought that would swear for people. Obviously, you two, Rose and Emily, you've got the job now. How would you say you're feeling, Emily, first? You know, ready for camp. You've not been yet, but you know you're going. What's your mind process? Um, I'm quite excited. I like the idea of having this new group of people to kind of get stuck in with. I would be more nervous if I hadn't gone away to uni, lived away from home for a bit, 
So that bit's not as daunting as last time I did a camp. Um, but I'm quite excited. What about you, Rose? So you're nervous or ready to get stuck in? No, no, I'm really excited actually. It's been like, I think as well, because I've come back home from uni, so I'm just at home with my family now. So I'm looking forward to getting out and mixing with new people and things like that. So I'm, I'm very definitely excited, yeah. Rich, I remember the stage you were most active at at the interview it seemed to be where everyone was just having tea and coffee and having a bit of a <laughs> chat. So I was wondering, what is your maybe go-to biscuit choice at that point? Well, I've got to say the bourbon. I've got to go for the bourbon, yeah. And usually take off the top layer, then eat around the bottom layer, and then have the creamy bit as much as by itself as one possibly can. Um, yeah. I try and get around at the at the interview. I try and get around all the groups, see everybody as much as possible, and and have as many biscuits as I possibly can um, when no one's watching. So, Rich, would you have maybe any advice for Rose or Emily? They're about to come to camp about how to maybe get used to it in the first week there. Yeah, just the the most important thing is to is is not to be too nervous when you turn up. Um, there are loads of amazing returning staff coming back and they are there to help, help you. So the most important thing is to try and sort of make friends, as it were, with, with the old staff and, and new staff. Listen, take in as much as you possibly can and understand that we don't expect you to know everything within the first couple of hours. We know that it takes time. And that is the job of the management team to continually be training and reminding you of things that you need to do. So after one week, when you've done one Monday, one Tuesday, et cetera, et cetera, you will then know, oh, actually, I now know everything's come into place. We're starting week two and I am as qualified as an old member of staff to, to do this job. And do you got anything you want to add to that? Yeah, be, be prepared to have lots of people around you, which... I love and you grow to love at camp. People are there for you, so don't be afraid to ask. It could be something really small. It could be a big problem that you, you might see at camp or, or anything. So just be open, just be relaxed because everyone's there to enjoy themselves as much as the kids are there to enjoy themselves too. So I would say relax and enjoy. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that. Just make sure you know i would say we're there for the kids for them to have a good time to spend as much time with them making sure they're happy and then the rest of your job will be much easier fantastic so that's some really good information for anyone watching this hopefully this has been really really helpful so rose emily thank you so much really great seeing you looking forward to working with you and um you becoming part of this family for well more than one summer hopefully many years to come and uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so pretty, pretty interesting insight there as to maybe what other people are thinking about camp. Rich, what did you think? Well, I, it reminded me, um, Emily was talking about traveling um, and she came from Exeter and then went and stayed up in the Midlands um, and came back down to London is the, the enormous traveling that people do to come to an interview and then therefore get a job. I mean, we've had people from all over the world attend interviews. We've had people getting coaches down from Scotland and you know being in a coach for 12 hours overnight and just arriving at the interview and then going straight back. So the dedication and the, that people show to get to us is fascinating. And that obviously helps a little bit because we know how keen they are to be with us. Yeah, Andy, could you see any, you know, similarities from, from yourself to the newer, newer interviews? Uh, yeah, so what I, what I picked up was how the, the positive environment and the positive re reinforcement from the staff that were at the interview is still felt today. And that's something that I felt was really the case for me when I was at an interview. So it's good to hear that there's still, people are still enjoying coming to interviews as well. So I've just got a couple of questions before we wrap up. Uh, once again, based on our years of birth. So we'll kick off with Andy. In 1998, can you tell me who the Prime Minister in Great Britain was? How, how old am I? Oh, God, that's me, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll thin that off, can I? We'll have it anyway. <laughs> what, what's the, what, who was the Prime Minister in 98? I could tell you. 
Go on, go for it, Rich. It's Tony Blair. Was. And, okay, so Rich, can you tell me, in 1976, in the UK music industry, which musical act had the best year in terms of record sales? I can't know. You know, you, you obviously asked me that on purpose because you know I know nothing about music. There's uh, someone... Mike, no, Mike, no, Michael Jackson would have been later, wouldn't he? Um, Elvis would might have been dead by then. I've got no idea. So help me. What would I know, Tom? I think if you think of perhaps my camp persona, it might mm. point you in the right direction. Think, think about Tom. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Handsome, sporty, helpful. Funny, who, what Andy, musician has all of those talents? Andy, do you want to smash out the park? It was Abba Rich. It was oh Abba. no, really? <laughs> Iconic. I love Abba. Have either of you seen um, Mamma Mia, the, the second one? The Mamma Mia, The Return? Best yeah, film yeah. Ever. Best film ever. Here we go again. I'm, I'm looking forward to going to see it with XUK at the uh, theatre. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth year, maybe, Tom. Fourth year. You never, you never know when you might get invited on that trip, Tom. Good luck. Okay, so, yeah, that is it for today's chat. Uh, we just want to say thank you for listening. Stay safe, stay at home, and we'll see you again soon. Oh, oh.